Hello, very welcome to a MIDI version of my DML talk. I'm Chang Zhili from Texas Tech University in the United States. My talk is on portable radar systems for live activity sensing, anomaly detection, and human tracking. This is an outline of my presentation. I'll start from portable interferometry, FSK, FMCW radar sensors for activity sensing and localization. On the microwave technique side, I'll talk about RF digital beamforming, MIMO, and SAR technologies. I'll also cover nonlinear detection for wearable sensing. As smart radar sensors become ubiquitous in modern life, their security becomes important. To that end, I'll talk about spoofing attack to smart sensor and attack mitigation. Finally, I'll briefly discuss industrial trends and outlook. I will begin my technical presentation with a video taken on my daughter Chloe when she was one year old. One night, I brought back a device developed in my group and mounted it on Chloe's crib facing her when she was sleeping. The device was able to use a very low power wireless signal to track Chloe's respiration and heartbeat when she was sleeping without any sensor attached to her body. On the other side, a computer displayed the detected signal on the screen with time domain shown on the top and the spectrum shown on the bottom. From there, I will explain the basic mechanism of non-contact detection of physiological motion, which is based on the vital Doppler effect. I will also point out several key issues such as the DC offset and IQ mismatch in the sensor design. Besides the vital Doppler effect, another important mechanism is the micro Doppler effect induced by the movement of body parts. I will use two examples to explain micro Doppler monitoring of human activities. The first one had a person sit down and raised hands twice. The second one had a person walked away from the radar, pushed and pulled arm twice, then walked back to the radar. Furthermore, I will discuss industrial R&D efforts of radar-based human machine interface, including the Google Solid project and the Pixel 4 phone, which has a millimeter wave radar chip to remotely recognize hand gesture commands. Besides Doppler-based motion detection, portable radars can also detect distance. Usually, a bandwidth is required to achieve this so-called range detection, and a popular technology is Frequency Modulated Continuous Wave Radar, or FMCW radar. I will explain the basic mechanism of FMCW radar, including how linear chirps are transmitted and range spectrum is calculated. Furthermore, I will explain how both the range and Doppler information can be obtained based on two fast Fourier transforms, the so-called range Doppler information. Then I will give an example of a 2D human aware localization using a beamforming FMCW radar. In this example, beamforming will be responsible for angular scan, while FMCW will provide range information. Furthermore, by analyzing the vital Doppler from the human subject, the system will be able to differentiate the human subject from other objects, including a car with its engine running, and therefore we can achieve human-aware localization. I will also give several other examples on fault detection, driver awareness monitoring, and potential active shooter detection. Shown here on this page is for detection based on the dynamics of a human subject's radar cross-section, range, and Doppler information. Since beamforming is an important technique for radar sensors to obtain angular information, I will spend some time to discuss affordable beamforming techniques for portable radar devices. To begin with, I will talk about a 24 GHz RF beamforming device with four receiving channels based on a microwave vector controller design as shown on this page. This talk will also include discussions on digital beamforming, such as this K-band digital beamforming FMCW radar. This design also features a non-uniform array that effectively reduces the required number of MIMO channels to achieve high resolution in both azimuth and elevation. 
It also resolves the gritting lobe issues of conventional uniformly distributed sparse arrays. With 2D angular scan offered by digital beamforming and range information offered by FMCW detection, this device can achieve 3D localization. After that, we will shift the gear and talk about nonlinear radar. One example of nonlinear radar is the RECU system developed in response to an avalanche tragedy that involved the inventor himself. RECU detectors are now standard equipment in many ski resorts, mountain rescue teams, and parks. The detector sends out a highly directional signal, and if the signal hits a nonlinear tag, it bounces back at twice the frequency. In this way, the detector can selectively pick up signal from the nonlinear tag while suppressing clutter reflections. To date, most of the nonlinear radar are based on second order harmonic operation, where the tag reflected signal is at twice the frequency of the radar transmitted signal. In this talk, we will also investigate recent research and development of intermodulation radar, where both the transmit signal and tag reflected signal are in the same band. Here is an example of intermodulation radar, which transmits two frequencies and selectively receives the third order intermodulation generated by the wearable tag. The wearable tag could be placed on the wrist or attached to clothing to enhance the detection of heartbeat signal. Smart radars are becoming ubiquitous in modern life for applications in transportation, healthcare, IoT, and human computer interface. To provide reliable service, their security is of paramount importance. This talk will present possible ways of malicious attacks based on time, phase, and frequency spoofing of radar signals. Furthermore, we will discuss technologies that mitigate potential attacks to make radar sensors more secure and trustworthy. For example, shown on the bottom of this page is a frequency shift based spoofing of FMCW radar to generate a faked target at certain distance. Method to identify the spoofed target will be presented. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please feel free to contact me if you would like to discuss further or if you would like to know my DML talk schedule.